undervolting is a great way to increase the power efficiency of your GPU. The GeForce RTX 4070 is already very power efficient using the world's most efficient GPU architecture, codenamed Ada Lovelace. But it can be made even more efficient through undervolting. If you combine undervolting with overclocking, you can increase the speed of the GPU while using less power. Disclaimer, the values shown in this video are what I reached on my particular GPU. Different RTX 4070s will reach different values. I use MSI Afterburner for the process, and setting up the undervolt can be done very quickly. First, you open the latest version of the MSI Afterburner program. At the time of posting this video, that would be version 4.6.5. Press Ctrl F to bring up the voltage frequency curve editor. Find the voltage point you want to target. In my case, I'm going for 995 millivolts. Then set the frequency. I am setting the frequency to 2835 MHz. Drag that point up till you hit the desired frequency. Then bring the points to the right below the target value and click Apply. To quickly select all the points to the right, hold Shift and highlight all the points. Then drag the points down and click Apply. Another way to set the undervolt curve is to increase the core clock on the MSI Afterburner main screen. In my case, I enter plus 150. This raises all the frequencies on the voltage frequency curve by 150. Next, find your target voltage point, then highlight all the points to the right by holding shift, then drag them below the target frequency and click apply. This brings me to the same 2835 MHz at 995 millivolts as the previous method. After applying the undervolt, click the save icon and select one of the five profiles to save it to. I prefer the second method, where all the points to the left get plus 150, as I have seen improved clock speeds under certain scenarios with this method. I'll show an example later. You can also increase the memory clock and power limit. I increased the memory clock by plus 1200, with the power limit maxed out, so that the GPU can pull up to 220 watts if necessary. Though, as we'll see in the power numbers in many scenarios, this isn't required. Here is the test system. The CPU is the Core i5-13600K, overclocked to 5.4 GHz P-Cores, 4.8 GHz cache ratio, 4.3 GHz E-Cores, and the RAM is set to DDR4-4000 C16. After setting the undervolt, you should do some stability testing and play some games to make sure it is stable in your games. I recently started using MSI Combustor since it is both a stress test and benchmark which allows me to quickly test the undervolt. Passing this test does not guarantee stability, but it is a good start. Using the MSI Combustor 1440p benchmark, with the GPU at stock, the score is 4906, with a 81 FPS average. With the undervolt, the score increases to 4960, an increase of over 50 points. Compared to my last GPU, the 3060 Ti, which I also undervolted and overclocked, the RTX 4070 is around 55% faster in this test. It's good to use benchmarks to make sure that the performance is increasing, but it is also important to play games and use other benchmarks as passing a single benchmark or stress test does not guarantee stability. In the Borderlands 3 benchmark, set to 1440p and using the high preset. The undervolted 4070 resulted in a 3% increase in the FPS. Compared to the undervolted 3060 Ti, which was my previous GPU, this is a 44% increase. In the Shadows of the Tomb Raider benchmark, the undervolt only increased the performance by 1%, but compared to the 3060 Ti undervolt, this is a massive 62% increase and the minimum versus the 3060 Ti improved by 85%. In the Guardians of the Galaxy benchmark, at Ultra Settings plus Ultra RT, using 1440p DLSS quality, the undervolt improved performance by 3%, while the minimum FPS improved by 14%. Compared to the 3060 Ti undervolt, the performance increased by 52%. Performance gains of 1-3% isn't much, 
but it is doing so while using a good bit less voltage and less power. Undervolting is more about keeping similar performance while using less power. Next, I'll show the power figures taken from some games showing the benefits of the undervolt. In Just Cause 3, at stock settings, the GPU is using around 173 watts in this area. With the undervolt, the value drops to 143. The stock card is using 21% more power in this case. In Forza Horizon 3, at 1440p, ultra settings, the stock GPU is using around 174 watts. With the undervolt, this chops to 137. The stock GPU is using 27% more power in this instance. Here is a GPU Z screenshot taken at the end of the Borderlands 3 benchmark. Here we see the stock voltage is an average of around 1.08 volts, with an average power draw of around 195 watts. The clocks at stock in the benchmark average at around 2800 MHz. Here we see the benefits of the undervolt. The clocks of the undervolt are at 2820 MHz. In fact, the clocks remain locked at 2820 throughout the whole benchmark. The board power draw is reduced to 156 watts, nearly 40 watts less than stock, and the GPU voltage got a massive drop. It went from over 1.08 volts down to the 995 millivolts set in MSI Afterburner, a reduction of 87 millivolts. Earlier, I mentioned that the second type of undervolt curve works better in some scenarios. Here, I have the power limit set to 100%, allowing each car to reach up to 200 watts. In power limited scenarios, such as this, the second type of undervolt curve works better as it allows for higher clocks. I tested an area of the very demanding Path Trace Quake 2 RTX at 1440p with dynamic resolution disabled and found that the first curve in this area had an average of 2654 MHz, while the second curve has an average of 2762 MHz. Both curves were set to the same 995 millivolts with a 2835 MHz target. In this case, there is an over 100 MHz difference from using a different kind of undervolt curve. The second method produces a higher MHz result, which is why I prefer this method of undervolting. But with the 100% power limit in this example, there are still fluctuations in the clock speed. This clock speed fluctuation can be stabilized by increasing the power limit. I have increased the power limit to 110%, which allows the GPU to draw a maximum of 220 watts. And now the card is locked at 2820 MHz in this area with no fluctuation in the clocks. By increasing the power limit and using the correct undervolt curve, you end up with a better overall experience. The previous test I showed where the card was drawing 30 to 40 watts less than stock was with the 220 watt limit in place. It won't use the extra power unless it's necessary. In the end, undervolting is still a great way to reduce power consumption. With the reduction in power comes lower fan speeds, which also means less noise. In most cases, the undervolt uses less power than stock. We saw several instances of 30 to 40 watts saved. From one profile, you can get the benefit of improved performance and increased efficiency. Undervolting enhances all five criteria I look for when building a PC. Silence. Since the GPU uses less power, it runs the fans at lower RPMs. Powerful. Increased core and memory clocks improve the performance, making the GPU more powerful. Efficient. Using less power while increasing performance increases the efficiency. Economical. Using less power reduces the energy costs. Durability. Using less power is less taxing for the components on the graphics board, which could extend its lifespan. As always, after setting your undervolt, it is important to check stability by running stress tests in playing games, while verifying that there is no crashing. Thanks for watching.